<laughs> Welcome to the cult classic horror show. Every week, you can have the conversations you've always wanted to have about the films you love. Shut up! Get rid of your distractions and prepare yourself you got a big surprise coming to you. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome everybody to the cult classic horror show. Danny Bonin here with you. Scotty Bonin here with you guys. We are the, the Blood Brothers. Brothers and the Rob and Carmelo Chimera in the house. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I just sort of ripped. Or in the it. lagoon this week. Yeah, in the lagoon. Yes, we are Smelly in the lagoon. lagoon. I, I already have a problem with this movie because of where they filmed it. We don't have lagoons. <laughs> yeah, Florida, 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 and, and, and Wakulla County or Palatka. I thought you I have lagoons those. in Florida. No, we most certainly do not. <laughs> What's lagoon, the- lagoon, like lagoon makes you think of like Blue Lagoon. And Brooke Shields running around half naked in a tropical paradise. Um, we do have certain things similar to that, but not where they shot this movie. I've surveyed where the they word you're shot looking for movie. is swamp. Yes, yes. Palatka, Florida is nothing but a swamp. So, and Wakulla County, Florida, aka Will Kill You County. That's what that's what the locals call it. Is Will Kill You County, Florida. Is nothing but a swamp. Well, so, yeah. So, 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 what's the difference between swamps and lagoon? A uh, swamp you don't want to be in. Okay, lagoon, I see. You do. I see. You're oh, telling okay, me okay. that they're swimming around in a swamp in this movie? Um, yeah. And Wak- well, in Wakulla Springs, they were. I think they were actually in the spring, which is crystal clear water, and it's got weeds and stuff. But for the most part, it's pretty crystal clear. But like. All the shots when they were coming on the top of the water, all those, the moss hanging in the site, that's Palatka. And yeah, and you actually see even in black and white when she's backstroking on the top of the water, there's like a mud trail behind her mm-hmm. from all of the silt and mud that's in the water. That water you couldn't probably see. They shot it in what color because it's crystal, but all that on the surface top stuff, you could see even in black and white. All the fuzz and nasty. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, so, well, before we... All the other water shots. Good insight shots. from yeah. our correspondent. There we go. Hell yes. Us. Yeah. Well, before we <laughs> before we get into all of that jazz, um, yeah, let's just go around the horn. I think that... I'll start. First thoughts? Uh, pleasantly surprised. I don't... I never make an effort to watch old, old horror movies or any old movie just in general because... I just don't think they're that good. I mean, they're not that entertaining. And granted, there isn't as much explosions or eye-catching things in these old films, even up into the 70s and 80s. But I don't know. This was this was a good film. I liked it. It was good. Um, awesome. I'll, I'll go next. I, I, uh, I thought with this being filmed in 1954, they did a lot with it, which I didn't think they could do back then. All the un- underwater shots uh, with the... Uh, scuba guys going underneath. Of course, they were they were stuntmen, not not the real actors. But um, it was very uh, visual, and for being black and white, uh, the underwater shots were awesome. The creature shots were great, and um, I thought it was really well done myself. So yeah, I liked it. Rob, what do um, you think? I uh, I did I did like this. Um, I've never seen it before. Uh, every old timer. Uh, in, in Florida, especially in the Panhandle, will tell you. I mean, you know, they shot Creature from the Black Lagoon over there, and you're like, yeah, okay, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, um, I thought it was really surprisingly good. I again, like I think we all talked about with Terminator, is it a horror movie? Isn't? It? I don't know. I mean, this is a horror movie, but 
It's rated me, G. Just, yeah, I mean, to me, this just was a. It just was a good. It was a really good movie. I don't know if I would call it horror in today's yeah. world, but I thought it was really good, and I can understand why it probably was such a. I assume it was a very big su- success in, I guess, nineteen fifty four. Yeah. yeah, and this yeah, it's it's kind of sci fi y too, I guess you could say. But uh, what but about yeah, you, uh, Carmelo? Are you still with us? <laughs> I am. Um, I really like the creature from the Black Lagoon. I think I I grew up watching some of the other Universal monsters, and this is one that I haven't seen until recent times. Um, and I'm I was pleasantly surprised with it. I think more so than the others that we'll look at when we do the other series. I think Creature has the most modern sensibilities in terms of like storytelling and pacing so even though it is still you know old it's still you know is is a little more slower paced than we would make these things today uh i i think it's a lot closer to what we're used to and so it feels more familiar um much like the way the creature bridges the gap between like man and fish evolutionary um the this movie kind of bridges the gap from the old universal monsters and maybe the more fantastic pictures that we're used to. Yeah. So I, I really liked it. I I yeah. think um, that – well, I'm going to be up front. First of all, I actually have never seen – I don't think any of the Universal Monster films ever. I'm just letting we, everyone know that I think that we've right seen now. bits and pieces of them, but never, like nothing full. Never seen the whole – I've never, never seen, seen them. them. Never seen them. Never seen them either. I mean, yeah. I've – Yeah, it's I, I know, sad to I know say. What, I, I know what they are, and you could have asked me – um, before before we started doing before we started doing this one, and we talked about doing the older ones. I think all of us could sit there and say Bella Lugosi and Lon Chaney Jr. Like we kind of you know about them, but I've never actually watched and an I, entire one. Ever. And, and I was reading a review on iTunes, and someone was like, in a bad way, they're like, "Oh, it's so, sometimes uh, it's the first time watching the movie," and I'm like, "Yeah, like why?" Why right. wouldn't why wouldn't you want it to be that way? How awesome is it to to like? Ex- that's why you have the reason you listen to the show. Sometimes there, are, of course, are movies we cover that we've all seen thirty eight times. But when you're watching this show and it's our first time watching these films, I would think as a listener, it would be a much better experience. It's like, oh, I can't wait to see what they think about this. You know, here we go. Yeah, yeah. And, and as a listener, sometimes you know, before I joined the show, seeing what you guys were covering made me say, like, oh. I never heard of that one or I've been meaning to watch that one and never got around to it. And that was my excuse. So, I, you know, if the listeners getting it for the first time, I don't see any problem with us getting it for the first time. Yeah. 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 yeah fuck you guys. It is. It is. Yeah. I will say I will say that this I will say, like, I was not bored watching this movie. I, I can sit there and say it's old timey, which isn't a bad thing, but I wasn't bored. I mean, I sat there and watched Chud in between getting up and off the couch 10 times because I literally was bored out of my mind. This, I sat and watched the whole thing from beginning to end and never once really was bored. Yeah, we all know about your attention span, Rob. <laughs> how short it and, is. And, and, and this held it, so this should this should be like put up well, somewhere. Let's, let's get a little uh, uh, overview here from Carmelo the, the Chimera. Let's do it. Of course. Uh, so, for those of you who have not seen or maybe want to refresh your memory on the creature from the black lagoon. Uh, the movie takes place in, uh, deep, deep within the Amazon, uh, with a very melodramatic opening explaining, you know, the dawn of creation and, and the evolution of creatures from the sea to the land where a scientist finds the fossils of what might be the missing link between sea creatures and, and land creatures. Uh, he returns to the Amazon with a team of scientists and, um, uh, they try to find this fossil only to to find that part of their crew has been savagely murdered, uh, unbeknownst to them, by a living example of this this species, the, the famous creature. They undertake to go further into the, the what's called the Black Lagoon looking for this thing. And uh, instead of finding its fossils, they find the real deal. Uh, it becomes enamored with one of the female scientists uh, in the crew, and is trying, sort of trying to, to take her, and they're trying to capture the creature to bring it back to land. Uh, but the creature turns the tables on them, pins them in the lagoon, and ultimately they need to confront the creature to rescue the, the female scientist and, uh, 
and escape. Uh, and ultimately, the, the creature sinks to a, a watery grave in the Black Lagoon uh, after totally trying to mind its own business for thousands of years. The scientist came in and just kind of fucked his shit up. And that's my review of the creature yes. in the Black Lagoon. <laughs> Heck yeah. And, and of course, woot, woot. is he dead or is he not? Did he fall to his grave? We do uh, not good know. Point. Well, there's two more. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Awesome. I actually didn't realize that, like, I thought, oh, there's sequels. <laughs> there must be other creatures of its kind. But mm-hmm. uh, just based on some of the stuff I've learned fact-wise that we'll be sharing with the listeners in a moment, uh, it sounds like they wanted to keep the creature alive to mm. have the specific creature with them. Yeah. The Gill Man. Um, as we like to call do we it. Have a, do we have a Rob's rundown on this? Uh, we do have a Rob's rundown. Let me let me filter through my phone. Fo- what did you break over there? <laughs> I heard something crash over there, and Just, then you're standing. Savannah's broke oh, something. Oh, oh, Savannah. I'm like, nothing happened over here. <laughs> you want to say hi? Hey, Savannah. Hello. They all said hi. Well, she oh. can't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My rundown. Uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon. We have inaccurate sounding chains. We have the Amazon. We have fossils luckily found 10 feet away from camp. We have the Devonian Age. We have an archaeologist dressed like Colonel Sanders. We have filming locations in Palatka, Florida and Wakulla County, Florida, also known as Wakilia County, Florida, also (laughs) known as Crawford, Tucky, Florida. We have lantern throwings. We have alligators. We have South American Steamboat Willie. We have lines like, I'll tell you when I've had enough and going into unexplored territory with a woman. We also have lines <laughs> like, <laughs> like, even I, Lucas, have heard of a legend of a man fish. We have menacing fish with lizard hands. We have menacing bubbles. We have uranium lead testing. We have underwater rock collecting, also known as UWRC. We have aquatic vegetation vandalism, which is illegal in most Florida state uh, state parks. We have semi-aquatic mating dance. We have monster gigging. We have intense incarcerated gill man staring. We have face ripping. We have mutant lizard fish monster swatting. We have one dead <laughs> scuba diver. We have fish poisoning, branch removal, weak winches, kidnapping, secret monster cave showdown, attack bats with a sex altar. We also <laughs> have, you know, I feel sorry for the misunderstood monster, so I'll... Show it mercy by gigging it with a pneumatic harpoon, poisoning its water source, stabbing it, and shooting it 37 times. But looking back on it, would any of this have been necessary if we would have not shot it with the harpoon in the first place and invaded its habitat? Maybe we should let science's great mysteries stay mysteries because man is the most destructive of all. That's a long one. Yes, he yeah. is. <laughs> Amen to that. Okay. I Good just kept rundown. going. It was. It just. It just kept giving me. There was a lot of other good stuff, but that, those are the things that stood out. All right, <laughs> Scotty, can you give it to us by the numbers? Uh, yes, I can. Um, there is not a lot on this as far as numbers go, um, but here's a couple uh, facts here. So the creature from the Black Lagoon uh, was uh, premiered in Detroit on February twelfth, nineteen fifty four. I did not find a budget for this, uh, but the box office... Back then, uh, it was probably like $100 yeah. million. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, yes. The box office is unknown, but... Um, I'm sorry, the budget is unknown, but the box office was $1.3 million, which I imagine in 1954 was probably pretty good. Um, the reviews were very positive, and a lot of the cast and crew thought that this might just be another monster movie and it might just get swept underneath the carpet but it got a very uh, devout uh, cult following and is very popular today as if it was in the 50s, 60s and 70s a lot of the actors went on and do a lot of bigger and better things but most of them are all known just for this movie and when people mention their names back when they were doing other things they would always mention this movie which kind of made them all mad But, but you know you make a good movie and uh, it stands out. So yeah, those were the numbers. All righty. Um, once again, uh, actually, just like last week, Terminator, uh, Mr. Carmelo Camira has most of the notes for this. He's given me some breaks here. <laughs> breaks. <laughs> some breaks. Technically, I breaks and quotations because uh, I am doing three different interviews this week, next week that I had to watch movies for and. 
uh, you know, we're just sharing the load like like good friends, like good friends who hug each other a lot. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Friends who just give each other their loads. Yeah. Over and over. We mm-hmm. love that. We love just, giving each other loads. I'm just giving Carmelo just a, just a <laughs> ton of my loads. No, no more docking for you guys. No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I just want to. I just want to be back in Colorado. <laughs> I know Rob has. Uh, Rob needs. I mean, he's been antsy. He's been sending us pictures and texts. I'm in Danny's new office with his nice new new door here. Got the new door. You're on. Missing out, man. We could all be <laughs> sitting around the desk. I could have made that door. <laughs> it's a nice door. It's heavy. Oh goodness sakes. Well, I have three pages of notes. All right, oh. let's let's get to it. Yeah, let's uh, get just started. Well, yeah, let's let's just jump right into it. Yeah, All right, we'll, yeah. so I'm gonna I'm gonna set the stage for you. Um, it's which is going to encompass a lot of the facts I would otherwise have given you. It's the it's the 1950s and the Universal monster movies as you know them. Uh, they're not like they're not on TV, right? There's like at the time a lot of conflict between movies and television and they don't get along and they see each other as competitors. And for a lot of people growing up in the fifties, then there was really no way to watch the universal monster movies with the exception of the creature, which might be why it is. I think or they brag anyway, that it's the most merchandised of all the monsters. You know, there's, there's Pez dispensers, there's action figures, there's models, there's what, I mean, you name it. The creature was on a ton of merch you know, from the fifties onward, which is also why, um, Julie Adams, who is the, the heroine in the movie, um, why she is one of the most famous actresses of any of the movies, as well as any of the sci-fi movies of the fifties, even though she really didn't do that many, she didn't do that many monster movies or that many sci-fi movies, yeah. but she's always pictured next to the creature. So she's, she's almost as iconic as he is. Um, so Universal's looking for a way to compete more with, uh, more with television and they kind of get it, get on this craze of like the 3d movies. And at the time, the 3d movies, they were all the rage, but they fell out of style because they were very, very difficult to project. They're not something that so the 3d looked fine. Actually, that's a misconception that 3d was like poorly done. It was very well done, but to run a 3d film, you have to have the movies playing basically twice at the same time. And if they're even a frame out of sorts, the effect is ruined. And if they're two or three frames, it becomes very painful to watch. Are you trying uh, to say that they had 3D movies before Jaws 3 in 3D? Y- yes, and Jaws 3D actually factors into this story because yeah. it killed, I saw it that killed too. the 80s remake of Creature from the Black Lagoon. They would have mm. done Oh, Ooh. Okay. there was so, so many times they're going to make a remake. Of I can't this believe we happened. don't have a remake yet. All right, let's just yeah, keep going. Keep going. So I, I will get to a remake, and I'm I'm trying to save that stuff for the end because that's sort of yeah. like the legacy of the creature. But do, do you think fans, do you think listeners would care how 3D works? I can explain how 3D technology. Works I'm intrigued. I don't care if they care. I care. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> sure, um, let's hear it. All right, being unanimous. So the way it works is this. If you remember when you're like a kid and you see like a 3D printed like like storybook and they have blue lines and red lines and then you have those glasses, right, with blue and red cellophane. So your one eye can only see the red lines and your other eye can only see the blue lines. You're with me so far? Yes. So then what your brain does is your your eyes are seeing two different images simultaneously and your brain freaks out and says, what the shit? And then it layers them on top of each other and creates the illusion of depth, right? So your brain actually makes the 3D effect because both eyes are seeing something different. So how to do that, I I use the color example because it's it's very easy to picture. How to do that with a movie that's not in color or, or just red or blue. And the way they do that is with polarization. So light waves can move in one of two ways. They can move up or down, which is like transverse, or they can move left to right, which is longitudinal. And whenever you see like a glare, that's light bouncing off the ground, left to right, longitudinally. So when you have, when you buy sunglasses that are polarized, they have like invisible lines you cannot see that cut the opposite direction and they cut the light waves and kill the glare. What Mm. they do with 3D pictures is they have the movie treated so that the film cells are polarized and they do that twice. So they show the movie once where the light goes up and down. And once where the light goes side to side and they layer that on top of each other, you wear 3D glasses in the theater. And much like the red and blue glasses you used to wear, one lens 
blocks out the up and down light and the other lens blocks out the side to side light. So your eyes are seeing two different images and then they layer that on top of each other. Your brain does this for you and makes it 3D. Okay, oh. if I had known it was that long, I wow. might have declined, but that was pretty good. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Um, yes, I'll save I'll save the rest for another 3D movie. In any case, um so this is this is where we're at. They get um they get this script for the creature and it's based off of allegedly based off a true story. So right at the time they're trying to do like a 50s monster movie or a universal monster movie, but in this 50s sci-fi was the craze, right? So the creature is sort of more in that sci-fi realm than a lot of the earlier ones. And um the the story the the, the story was written by a William Allen who was friends with Orson Welles. And uh, in fact, he was almost arrested with Orson Welles when they did the famous broadcast of War of the Worlds that mm-hmm. fooled a bunch of people mm-hmm. yeah. into thinking they're real aliens. We had so to they listen to that party. in middle school. We'd like listen to that. Do you really? That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Um, I've actually I've always wanted to hear it. I don't know that I never, I don't think I ever have. Yeah. Um, at, so at Welles' home one night, they're at a dinner party and there's this man named Gabriel Figueroa and he's a Mexican filmmaker and he's actually a prolific one. And he tells William Allen, a local legend, of an Amazonian man-fish hybrid that comes once a year to claim a maiden from the locals and then takes her back to the lagoon. And I guess he, like, insisted it was true. <laughs> and it just kind of stuck with Alan because of that. So he he wrote it, and he, he gave it the classic Beauty and the Beast uh, theme that all these Universal Monster movies have, which really mm-hmm. goes back as... F- it goes back as far as Dracula, but really uh, popularized by King Kong, right? So this is this yeah. is this movie. In fact, it's often said that if you watch Creature and the Revenge of the Creature back to back, it's basically King Kong together. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. So I'll note that uh, it, when I watch it. Yeah. Um, little fun fact: the original treatment for the script called for the bad guy to intentionally use Julie Adams as bait to catch the creature. Ooh. Uh, they did a second draft where they called it the, the Pisces man was the creature and he was much more sympathetic. Um, right I'm from the bat. That's right. That's right. Uh, and right from are. the bat, they planned it as a series. So it was always going to be something that they wanted to replicate. So that's kind of uh, kind of our background uh, to take us into the film. All right. William, uh, William Allen. Okay. So he's, he's yeah. the one that produced it and then had, had the idea for it. Right. Okay. And it sort of nice. follows in the tradition of like, folklore about sirens mermaids um or arthur c clark's lost world uh and then this movie itself went on to influence everything from jaws to alien take a lot from the creature from the black lagoon congo Uh, yeah anaconda yeah that's a good movie i like congo that was really good (laughs) amy amy says that was come on it's congo what the fuck are you talking oh oh. that's congo i sort of I sort of really meant to say anaconda. Also anaconda. Anaconda. Which one? Anaconda has. Wait, wait, Congo. Which one has Bruce Campbell in it? Congo. Congo, Congo okay. does. Yes. All right. That's. So, I like that one. <laughs> another really special thing about the film is that it was shot in 3D and underwater, and that was new because up until then, underwater cameras were all stationary, and this is the first time they had portable underwater cameras it was it was frankly unheard of so for a lot of people seeing this in 3d was j- like just blew them yeah away. i bet yeah, yeah but i guess they didn't have wetsuits back then either they were just wearing um, short shorts yeah right yeah and you know what it would have made sense for the characters to have worn wetsuits in the amazon wouldn't it i guess i mean it might be really it probably was just really hot they, and think, the water was warm they when didn't i need think a, of an amazon lagoon i just think of when you jump in you're just gonna get attacked by 80 different species and something's gonna fly up your pee hole i think the lagoon's uh, fresh that, water that that, that, yeah. that happens in florida too uh, it's not just it's not just the yeah. amazon that happens at fun, a nightclub fun in florida. fact though fun fact though when they were in wakala springs pumping out that white powder that was meth Oh, that's of course. What got the, that's what got that's got in the water system. That's what got all the locals was, hooked to it. That I'm was sure the uh, that's what it was. That's the fish hangover powder, right? Yeah. It was it was pure crystal rock, meth. Rock and yeah. <laughs> Do you want to know what it really was? Sure. Baby powder. It was not meth. It turns out that stuff they're dumping in the water is real. That is like a real chemical 
people use sometimes. Um, I think they call it ro- rotonin. Uh, yeah. um, Rocket, in the movie, Rogano? they make it show yeah. up. They're actually sprinkling like cream mixed with aluminum on the surface of the water. Underwater, it's just pure cream that's dumping to show up on the uh, on the camera. Huh. huh. I did not know that. I or math. I just, that's I, just, it. I, just, I just assumed it was math. It reminds me of a of an eighty year old Rob blowing his load. <laughs> I don't be hit. Goes, you'd have that much cream. Just goes. Phew, yeah, just yeah, a bunch just, of dust. Yeah, just a bunch of dust. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it was cool to see the old like scuba gear too, with the with like the little like. Uh, pipes that are going to the guy's mouth it's not actually like a line and like a regulator uh and and i don't know if you guys noticed the the director jack arnold uh, did it on purpose he had david wear two tanks and mark wear one tank so you could tell them apart when they were in the water didn't even notice that oh, at all Oh, nice. Yeah, so it didn't it's even work it. didn't work you i didn't, didn't see it. that see i thought they just had him like that so david the guy that's kind of the good guy would have more air than mark uh, ultimately, and then Mark would just die without having enough air. But obviously, he died the other way because the creature got him. Yeah. Yes, the but, creature. Yeah. The cre- The creature swatted him gently. Yes, and murdered him. They were. They were like. Ta- they were like wrestling within the water. That a was lot pretty, of people. Cool. A lot of people died, and then I was like, "What? They died." <laughs> <laughs> that happened yeah, a lot I mean, of times. He he, he face palms <laughs> the pipe smoker, and then the next scene, the guy's wrapped up like the Invisible Man. Like yeah, yeah. He, mu- he must have he just, some kind of uh, like poisonous venom in his face palm. Yes, that's you know? cool. I also think he does a lot of scratching. You don't see. I think his claws yeah. are supposed to. Be pretty yeah. Oh, he's all he's all tweaked out on meth. That's what it is. <laughs> Carmelo, I just. Have- just like Sorry. the white man to go to a swamp and yeah. then get the locals addicted to crack and then kill them for it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, no. These are rednecks. It's not crack. It's meth. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Oh, I, okay. have, I have a question. I don't know if you know this, uh, Mello, but uh, um, I just called you Mello. <laughs> I like that. That's <laughs> but, good. Uh, but um, since this was kind of a later addition to the Universal uh, Monsters of Horror, like, you know, Dracula was 1931. And the Wolfman was 1941. I, I mean, all, all these were so much earlier. Um then the creature of the Black Lagoon that came in kind of later in the 1950s. Was it? Was there controversy of it adding it to like Universal as part of the Universal monsters? Obviously, it was it was it was Universal, but you know you have to be kind of high up yeah. there to be a part of that that uh, uh, that category. I mean, they made it. Yeah, but you know, it's I guess Gil, you know, Gilman, but. They made a lot of other mo- movies that probably weren't classified. Yeah, and, and, and Gilman, you know, is not like Dracula or Frankenstein or yeah. The Invisible Man, I guess. Well, those characters are all based in literature, right? Those characters all, yeah. all already had, like, iconic status. So, you know, Scotty, you make a good point, and I guess I don't. I guess I don't know except to say that it's spo- the creature is spoken of with, like, such affection by people nostalgically. Yeah. And and beca- again, because this was the only one out in theaters and available to watch in the 50s, for a lot of people, it was their first Universal monster. Ah, and yeah. so, if anything, it had the reverse effect uh, by, by by doing that. Um, I could definitely see funny, that. It's funny. One thing that you, you s- said reminded me, this movie was originally planned to be in color. And I did hear that the budget estimated in the, in the commentaries, which who knows if it was a, a final thing. <laughs> Is somewhere in the neighborhood of like eight hundred thousand or eight hundred and fifty thousand, uh. and by filming in black and white, they saved about a hundred. Uh, and wow. I, I have a note that it's better this way because I think if it had been in color, it would have separated it too much from the other Universal monsters. Okay, yeah. Um, though they did say that the lagoon was very beautiful and the creature's suit was very cool. In, in all the like promo art, it's super colorful. Sort of like it, the blood was, in our she of the wood scalping. <clears throat> Just as beautiful as that, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, but it, yeah, same idea is that like they're, they're, the color would have been cool, and it's kind of lost in black and white. Uh, but in this case, I think it helped it. Yeah, that's weird because uh, well, first of all, um, I noticed that my Universal Monsters was missing a DVD. I bought the whole set. I didn't. I can't find Dracula Dead and Loving It in there. Oh yeah, <laughs> shit. Oh, <laughs> that, that is they that, that is you? my favorite. Yeah. They jiffed me. Carmelo got his right. Yeah. You got yours. I in the, oh yeah, I've got Dra- of course. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't order it, but I looked online. It didn't have. Uh, it didn't have uh, the Robert De Niro Frankenstein either. Which, or, or, young oh, Frankenstein. or young Frankenstein. Or young Frankenstein. Yeah. 
or Frankenstein. These postal workers are just taking them out. Oh, goodness sakes. All right, well, let's continue on with some more goodies. Some more yes. zingers, if I may. Yes, you may. So I've got some zingers about the suit. about Because really, one of the most iconic things about this, besides the underwater stuff, which I can't stress how revolutionary that was, but the, the creature itself, right? He's very iconic. And I think if it hadn't been so cool, I think Scotty would have been dead on, and I don't think this would be remembered alongside like Frankenstein or Dracula, but, but he's super neat looking. And, um, and I think it holds up even, you know, there's definitely some parts that look a little bit hokey, but for the most part, I think the suit looks really good. And originally it was very streamlined. He almost looked like an eel. He had a lot less scales on him. Uh, but I think texture helps the thing show up better on film. I think that's one reason they changed it. Uh, it was also like a lot sadder. So they actually do have this like this like slimmer creature that they were they were gonna save for a female creature, uh, but the sequel never got made. They never they never got around to seriously considering the she creature from the Black Lagoon or anything like Damn that. Oh, I want to see that love scene. Yeah, I actually, I actually would have liked to see that movie. I could do without the fish gill sex thing, but you know whatever. What I thought um, you comic book whoa. guys were all about that kind of stuff. <laughs> what? I don't know. Just seeing sci-fi entities fucking. I thought that was like, you know, I'm, something you guys I mean, are all that, into. That's all, that's all the shape of water was, from what I'm told. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's funny you should say that Guillermo del Toro wanted to remake The Creature. He loves this movie. Yeah. And he always thought like it had a sad ending, so he wanted to remake it with a happier ending. Now, I have not seen The Shape of Water, but I, I assume thought. The Creature gets laid, so... That's a happy air ending, I think. Yeah, I think Del Toro. He wanted to. He he really wanted to see the the Gill Man and uh, and Julie Adams, you know, get it on. So and that didn't happen. So he made Shape of Water, which uh, yes, I have seen it, and um, yes, it does happen. Ha- happy ending. Oh my so god! He, so he takes the creature to an Asian massage parlor. Yes. Yes. Happy okay. ending. No, but is um, it, uh, yeah, Shape of is Water it is very. Is it beautiful? It's very um, kind of disturbing, but disturbingly like um, refreshing in a way. Like, oh it, my god, it's, it's okay. It's Guillermo's a he's a pervert. It's <laughs> it was it was good. I thought it was good, but it was definitely uh, weird. But but still like ha- happy good, you know. Okay. <laughs> oh, holy Jesus. holy crap! My ass is stick. Oh, what, so that's was just that? good timing, I what guess. What does that sound mean? That means it's time for the horror halftime. Just, just don't even try. Ah, yes. Okay, guys, before we can announce the horror halftime, we have an announcement of our own. We are now sponsored by Studio House Designs. These guys are the best in the business. These guys revolutionized the VHS print. It's where it all started. But now they have all kinds of other incredible, incredible products out there. I mean, if you want it, t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, baseball tees, crew necks, hoodies, tanks, pins, flags, patches, phone stands, stickers, pillowcases, sunglasses, subscription boxes, screen printed posters, gift cards. They have it all. They have everything that you could possibly want right there. If you want to bring back the short sleeve shirt under long sleeve shirt under short sleeve shirt. They got you covered. If you got a fine, fine, fine date coming up, you want to wear your best hoodie. They got you covered. All you have to do is go to studiohousedesigns.com, put whatever you want in the cart, and at checkout, use discount code CCH. All capital letters. CCH at discount for 15% off store wide. One item, 20 items, doesn't matter. CCH at checkout for 15% off store wide. The only thing that is not covered in this discount is their subscription service. I'm sorry, you can't have everything. But it's not a bad deal. Anyway, again, studiohousedesigns.com, CCH at discount. Get your 15% off. Let them know Cult Classic Horror sent you. Be sure when you get your gear to tag them on Instagram. Tag us on Instagram. Spread the word of the cult classic horror show and enjoy your horror halftime. The horror halftime is where we award a horror freak of the week. How do you become horror freak of the week? I'm glad you asked. 
You can submit a meme into our Facebook group or anywhere on social media as long as you tag at Cult Classic Horror or at CC Horror on Twitter and you use the hashtag Hoarder Halftime in your post. Uh, a meme. So you need to post a meme uh, anywhere about that has to do with last week's episode. So in this case, we are awarding the winner for their memes that have to do with Terminator. Um, if we like your meme the best, you will be coined, nay, crowned. The horror ah. freak of the yes. week, and we will send you free stuff. Um, usually, it's a T-shirt, and if you already have one or two T-shirts, then we'll send you some uh, pack of stickers. Uh, you know, whatever we want to. We need to get CCH crowns. Y- yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you guys would wear those or out and about into cons. Like yes. the like 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 the BK crown. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we do have a horror freak of the week. This week's horror freak of the week is. Rich Colson. RC. RC, send us a message Good on man. the Facebook page Woo-hoo. and uh, give me your address, shirt size, and we'll hook it up. Um, awesome meme. All, all you guys participating again, great job. We've got, we've got a lot of participants lately, so we really appreciate that. When you guys do that, you share it in the Facebook group. It builds awareness for the podcast, and I think that really is like the best possible way to build awareness for the po- for the podcast in that massive horror group is just by uh, participating in the horror halftime. So thank you, guys. Yes. Um, it was a great meme. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Terminator Horror Freak of the Week. Coffin. While we're still in the Horror Halftime, I'm trying to make these a little bit shorter because we tend to ramble on a lot. Um, I do want to announce that She Walks the Woods is now on Amazon Prime. Yes. yes. So, literally. Finally. Yes. So, right now, you can go to Amazon Prime, type in She Walks the Woods. Uh, please watch it and leave a review. If you if you absolutely don't want to do any of that, at least just go leave like a five star rating. That will help us. Um, but yes, please watch it. Leave a review. We're trying to build momentum and get a bunch of um, hubbub going on around it on Amazon. All in the first week here. See if we can't get like bumped up in their algorithm or, or whatever we're supposed to do. Um, so yes, please go watch that on Amazon Prime. Uh, keep an eye out. We're going to be doing some publicity for it. We had a little PR firm getting us some interviews and stuff, and uh, we're doing some social media advertising. So hopefully, you start seeing it everywhere. Um, and yeah, just check it out. Good, good one for Halloween tomorrow night. Yes. And we didn't even right. mention Hell Halloween yeah. yet. This is basically our Halloween episode. It's Hel- we haven't even mentioned it's, it's Halloween. Halloween everybody. Yeah. yeah, as you're listening to this, it is Halloween. It's yes. We're, we're, we're recording it Unless Halloween Eve. Unless you're listening Eve. to it after the day we air it. Then yes. it's yes. any other day but Halloween. That yes. is true. Yes, if you're listening to this on the day it's aired, it is Halloween. Now, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, guys. Happy, happy Halloween. Happy, happy Halloween. 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 Halloin. Happy, happy One more day till Halloween. 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 Anyways, Halloween. Yeah, speaking of rambling on, uh, do we have a voicemail from one of the... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, let, hold on. The way I want to do this... Is I want to end the horror halftime. So ah. that <laughs> that concludes the horror halftime. All right, now that we're back into the subject of creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, we have a voicemail from Robin Party. If you guys don't know, if you are a patron at the appropriate level at patreoncom classic horror, you can leave us voicemails pertaining to this episode, to the, any episode that that you know we're covering. And leave us your thoughts, opinions, facts, whatever you want to do, and uh, we will air them on the show. So, this week's voicemail is from Robin Party. Here we go. Hey guys, it's Robin from the Facebook group. I'm glad you guys are reviewing this movie. The Gill Man has always been one of my favorite creatures. It's great how the actor can show such emotion, even through the suit. Goes from threatening to sympathetic so easily near the end of the movie, just with his body language. (laughs) Either way, congrats on getting She Walks the Woods on Amazon. I'm looking forward to checking it out. Thanks for listening to my voicemail. Take care, guys. All right, that was... Robin awesome. Party. Thanks, Dear thanks, 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 Robin. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Robin. That was great. Yes, good, good points there. Thank you for uh, the congratulations on She Walks the Woods, as we just mentioned. Go watch it now. Uh, and, and yeah, and, yeah, he's touched on exactly what we were talking about, which is just like how iconic the Gill Man is, which is what makes this so endearing, you know, or enduring. I say. Yeah, and how, and a good point too about you know how well he shows emotion w- non-verbally because I did sort of get that. From the film, you know, you, I, did, I didn't find that lacking at all. No, yeah, no. no, I agree. Yeah. 
it, it did seem like he became more helpless and more hopeless in love towards the end there. Yeah, he's had a soft Even side to him. Even though he's swatting a lot of shit. And-, and it's very much, I think, in the tradition of a lot of these these movies. In, in fact, really only Dracula and I guess maybe arguably The Mummy um, are, are really, you know, truly evil. But like Frankenstein, again, is the same thing as like sort of the the um, misunderstood monster or you know, freaking Lon Chaney's, you know, Wolfman is also like a, a creature who's cursed by circumstance. Isn't he's not a bad guy. He's really sympathetic in that. So that's another way the creature kind of resonates with the themes of these movies. For a yeah. second, I thought you said cursed with circumcision. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm also cursed with circumcision. <laughs> so am I. So I against him. He did. Rob's uh, not weighing it. <laughs> <laughs> not circumcised. All right. He, uh, the uh, Gill Man, the creature, did uh, move very gracefully within the water. Um, and the the guy who played uh, the underwater creature was Rico Browning. Uh, he was a professional diver and a swimmer. Uh, he was required to hold his breath for up to four minutes at a time for um, for the Gill Man and uh, during the long swims. Uh, the director's logic was that air would have to travel through the monster's gills and not uh, reveal air bubbles from his mouth or or his nose. Um, and this actually did, it didn't really work out because uh, you did see some of the bubbles coming from the creature's head. I didn't really see it, but apparently it did happen. Um, and then the above water creature was Ben Chapman um, playing the creature. And... Um, he also, I believe Ben Chapman played in this all both two sequels after this. He was also the creature. The, so was um, Rico. Yeah, so was and Rico. so was Rico, too. Okay, cool. So so was Rico, too. And I, I know the underwater shots, as Rob said, were filmed in Florida, and the end on top of the water was filmed in Florida, but then the out of the water on the boat and whatnot was filmed. I said whatnot. Was filmed in California, so... Four fucking minutes. Yes. I just that got me curious, and I just googled longest breath hold. And German freediver Tom Seitz held his breath underwater for twenty-two minutes and yeah. twenty seconds. Oh my those, god! Those freedivers are crazy. Jesus, you like you like see those like 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 freediver guys that are on like Shark Week and stuff? They can hold their breath for like ten minutes. It's it's crazy. I don't understand how that even yeah. is possible at all. Yep. So. so a couple of fun stories about Rico Browning, who played the creature. Um, he he could hold his breath for four minutes, but he could go under. He would stay underwater for over an hour or longer. What would happen is he he didn't have a tank, as Scotty said. He what he did was this method called hose breathing. So hmm. he would he would have other divers swim over to him with a tank of air and a hose, and he would take a breath out of the tank, out of the hose, shoo them away. He would, they would go, he would signal to the cameraman that he was ready. They would film and then he would take another breath in between shots. And he would just like for over an hour at a time, he could stay underwater breathing from a hose every four minutes or so. Like, it was, I would just lose my mind from claustrophobia. I would, oh, I would yeah. Go, yeah, that's yeah. insane. This is reminiscent, just side note, of, of when we covered Alien Resurrection. If you guys. Might not be your favorite movie ever, but you should definitely listen to that episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should definitely listen to the episode because it's fascinating how they filmed the. Because you know, there's like a 15 minute underwater sequence. Oh yeah, in that film. I, actually, that's one of my favorite sequences within that movie. Yeah, so check that out. It's just it's just reminding me of that as we're talking wow. about it right now because they were buddy breathing and and doing all kinds of shit under there and their milk and lettuce filled water. So, because oh, it takes oh. place in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> There, um, there was, um, I was, Rico, uh, so he had a lighter suit w- w- wore within the water, but then Ben Chapman, uh, played the creature out of the water, wore a darker, heavier suit. I guess it was so hot that when he wasn't, and, he, and it took a while to get out of it, so when he wasn't filming, there there was a lake behind where they were shooting, he would just sit in, in, the, in, the, in the lake until he was able to, until he got called back on set, so he would just sit in the lake, just cooling off. Yeah, this this is crazy. So, uh, I, is there more interesting facts about the underwater? Because the breath hold is amazing. I'm wondering how the cameramen did it, and and were they free swimming with a camera in their hands, or were they being yeah. guided by a line? Or it was yeah, it was a portable camera, so they were able to swim with it. And they were divers; they had uh, they had the tanks on, and uh, you know they they'd look to Rico, and he would signal them that he was ready to film. Then they would signal back that they were rolling, and then he would just swim. 
and uh, they, you know, doing this in 3D underwater allowed them to create these like really spectacular action sequences for the time. Um, and a lot of people will recall seeing like this floating cube of water in theaters was just like beyond them. Hmm. Um, even even like National Geographic films and stuff like that hadn't quite mastered portable underwater. Something cameras. had to be. Was there like a cable attached to the camera though, or something? I'm wondering. Maybe not. I think it was just divers. Okay. Yeah. No, I think yeah. It, yeah. No, it was really filmed good. I, awesome. I couldn't believe it. You didn't watch? Yeah. Did you watch it in 3D, Carmelo? I did not. I do not have a 3D television. Okay. So I, was I was just, just curious. curious. I, I almost like wish I had just for this movie. It's not a thing I've ever wanted before, but I kind of would have liked to have seen this in 3D. Yeah. Huh. I have. Um, I can boomstick some facts. Yeah, for let's this. do it. Uh, the working title was Black Lagoon. They uh, sent out like a company wide memo before it came out saying we want like a title that is going to better capture the mystery here and stay away from words like monster because we don't want to cheapen the film. And they ended up with Creature. Um, the movie was directed by Jack Arnold, who directed uh, It Came from Outer Space and The Incredible Shrinking Man. So he was kind of a 50s sci fi icon. Um, in those days, studios assigned their actors to movies, which is how Julie Adams got the job and how Richard Carlson got his job as the lead. And he was sort of a staple of sci-fi films as the like scientist hero, which is a hallmark of 50 sci-fi movies that the scientists were the heroes of the movie. Um, the, the suit required them to glue pieces onto a leotard and the, the chemical reaction between the, the glue got really hot. It actually burned Rico Browning at one point. He says he still has one scar from the, the glue. Um, you can't talk about the creature without talking about an, a designer named Millicent Patrick. Uh, at the time, they billed her as the beauty who created the beast. And she was the first Disney, uh, Disney hired woman animator. And she did the, the sketch designs of, of the creature. Uh, but there is this fellow, his name is Bud Westmore. And I have a note here that Bud Westmore is a bitch. <laughs> um, you'll, <Yeah. laughs> you'll see, if you look it up, you'll see that he's the only credited like special effects artist. And then there's a bunch of uncredited ones on IMDb. And that's because Westmore was like a huge ham for press. Um, he was just like an arrogant guy who wanted to take credit for everything. There's, there's none of this is slander. There are memo records of him complaining to universal executives about them giving credit to Millicent. And they they wrote a memo back where they were like, Millicent tries to give Bud credit in every interview she does. It is if if anyone thinks she did this instead of him, yeah. that's on the studio and it's not on on Millicent. But by the way, she did do all of this. <laughs> Westmore would he would actually come onto the set while Chris Miller, who was the artist who was like sculpting the suit, he'd come in and he'd be like, Chris, oh, you're doing such a good job. Take the day off. And what that meant was that the press was about to show up and take pictures. And then, you know, bastard. Westmore would like, yeah, and he'd like pick up a scalpel that he never used and just like hold it near the creature for a photo op. And Miller like knew that this was a thing he would do. So he hung out for one of the, the pictures. So there's there's press photos of, oh, Bud Westmore hard at work on his new creature. And Miller's in the background and he's not even identified uh. in the photograph. Uh, so like Westmore is just like a piece of shit from everybody's account. Wow. Um, so he didn't do any of it at all. No, he didn't do, he didn't do dick. God. Um, it sounds like he, he was like the supervisor. He's like, so he would have been like a Stan Winston in terms of his role at the studio, but Stan Winston himself was like an actual artist who actually yeah. got involved. Westmore was more or less just the figurehead. Um, yeah. Chapman was the land creature. He often would try to scare people. Um, but the guy who really got lucky with that was Rico. One time he got out of the water to use the bathroom and there was just like a mother and her daughter on the beachfront who <laughs> ran screaming. And then of course, what does he do? He runs after them going, no, it's okay. It's I did okay. read that. <laughs> much worse. Oh my God. That's I awesome. forget if I saw a creature come out in full costume. I, Fuck yeah. Holy shit. Uh, 1955 <laughs> too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I just, Rob's been showing me things and I just have to mention <laughs> That he just drew a poorly, uh, barely more than a stick figure naked woman and man with a large erection. It was no, it's the no, it's the it's it's the monster. It's I the guess creature. it's the monster. See, oh, look, okay. I put scales so on of, of of the love scene in this okay. movie. Um, it's uh, so Julie Adams was famous at the time because Universal bragged she had the most perfectly symmetrical legs in the world. I guess she did win an award for that. Oh. So they, they used to say that her legs were insured for 125000 and it's like an old publicity trick to like build up their actresses. Um, uh, 
but in, in her case, a lot for a lot of people, the most famous scene in the movie is her her underwater dance with the creature where she doesn't know he's there. Uh, and it's only half oh, Juliet. Yeah. It's, it's half uh, Ginger Stanley. Who, so she, they're literally cutting back and forth. Whenever it's underwater, the shots are in Florida. It's a totally different unit. It's Ginger Stanley. When they show above the water, it's Julie Adams. Um, and in Florida, there are two guys, basically, we're, we're directing it, James Havens and Scotty Wellborn. But Havens, this is conflicted. Some people think Havens refused to go underwater. And some people said it wasn't that he refused or that he was afraid. It was that he didn't have the training. But regardless, Havens got credit as the as the second unit director, but he never went underwater. So he was like like it was Scotty Wellborn who was literally underwater while directing the movie. Hmm. But then Havens would be sort of like just giving criticisms from from above. And they they more or less had to take him aside and they were like, you either need to go underwater or get out of the way. And well, Wellborn is more charitable about this. He does not think that it um, that Havens should be remembered so harshly. Uh, but a lot of people think Scotty Wellborn was the real director of the underwater stuff. Yes, um, he has great names, so of course he was. Controversy, of course, here. naturally. <laughs> yeah. Naturally, yeah. Um, wow. Ben Chapman, who played the land creature, claimed hung to this claim to fame so much so that he even put a picture of the creature on his business cards when he was a real estate agent. Oh, oh my God. that's awesome. There's one one of the the local actors, uh, Henry Escalante. He gets like attacked by the creature near the end, and he's one of the like local ship hands that gets thrown off. And he spoke to the uh, the film historian who did the commentary, and he totally straight faced, totally like believably ex- said that he himself played the creature, and he told stories about oh how hot the suit was and stuff. Uh- and I guess it was just like. He went on and on about it, but there's not a, like a word of truth. And this guy's just convinced, or at least is a good liar, that he played the creature. He just got thrown off the boat? Yeah, he's like near the, he's in the whole movie, but he's one of the like hands who doesn't have very much speaking parts. Yeah. And then he gets thrown off the boat near the end. But he claims to have also played the creature the entire time. Him huh. and the guy, and the guy with the picture on his card, I mean... Do they do cons? Ben are they Chapman. like are they like the fifties, like the seven? Well, would would have been then the sixties or seventies version of Edward Furlong or something, just showing up and trying to sign some pictures. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like it might have been. I think they're all dead now, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I did see that that Ben the Ben Chapman who did uh, was the on land uh, creature um, did appear uh, at the appearance with uh, Abbott and Costello on a, a episode of the Colgate Comedy Hour. Um, it aired prior before the film was released. And he, he was the first one to be there and didn't really even ask him to, to come. But I think, he, you know, they, they, they needed him there or someone there. So he was the one that went. Um, and the appearance is commonly known oh. as Abbott and Costello meet the creature from the Black Lagoon. There was a lot oh, of nice. Abbott and Costello combinations in these um, mon- Universal Monster movies <clears throat> towards the end there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, the Colgate Comedy Hour that became the Abbott and Costello Meet the Creature, that's not like a movie they were able to put on this Blu-ray, which is sad because we have the rest of the Abbott and Costellos. Um, yeah. Oh, probably, that's cool. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, do you have a lot? Is, what, what are we missing here? <laughs> um, the eyes for this creature were like a huge pain in the ass. Um they had, you know, various lenses depending on how close up they needed to be. Basically, the closer they are to the creature, the less the actor can see. Mm. Huh. Uh, underwater, Rico Browning just like used his naked eyes in the in the oh, swamp. So, like, yeah. Um, so he's got uh, like meth eyes. He does. Yes. Have meth eyes. Uh, the last, I've got a couple more notes, but the real last thing that's very interesting is there's a deleted s- scene that's kind of cool. They apparently, um, the ship captain was going to tell this elaborate story like a local legend about a mermaid and it was going to be cut over with footage of the lagoon and how the mermaid like fell in love with a land person. And then the people from the land like killed her. And it was sort of going to be implied that this mermaid was, was maybe the creature's bride or something. And that's why he's alone. Um, And they, and it would have set up the parallel about like people coming into this natural habitat and then screwing up this life of this perfectly, you know, dangerous, but not like malignant creature. And it was going to parallel it, and they cut all that. Um, mm. out of the I don't even think they. I don't think they filmed it. I did uh, find. I did think it was interesting. Um, the it just it obviously seemed old timey because of it's black and white, because some of the elements of the film, but the acting seemed to be fairly timeless. There is some of that that uh, you can especially tell with Julie Adams. 
women just talked different while acting back then. You know what I mean? Guys did too, but yeah. I think you tend to notice a little more with the women where they just have that 50s voice, you know, where they talk like that and they act like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My wife sure. says it's because men didn't know how to write women at all. <laughs> yeah, back then. that's probably sure what it was. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just fun to see and imagine what they would have done differently today because aside from the ton tons of special and digital effects they would have done to make that creature terrifying today um also you know those two guys in the water diving they probably would uh not that they those guys looked bad but they would probably be a little bit younger and more jacked and like just it seems like and same with the the julie adams i don't know how old she was when they filmed this do you know how old she was when they filmed this um, I, think, I bet. I think she was like thirty. It didn't seem like she was that. Was, old. Was I'm not looking. saying she was that old, but they probably would have gone with someone younger again these days. You know? Yeah. <laughs> she was. Well, she was. Like she was. not hard to look at. I, mean, I guess that's not was very pretty. pretty. But I definitely uh, think the guys I, were. I mean, those guys looked like they were in their mid to late forties. I thought. And yeah, she was. Yeah, she was. She was yeah. born. 90, yeah. So I yeah, she was. She was. She was twenty eight. The most attractive of the Universal like starlets. I think yeah. she's the most. Oh, she no, was definitely attractive. There. Yeah, and she did a good job, too. And really, she's the only female in the whole cast. I mean, yeah. right? Was there... Yeah. I, yeah, so... Yeah, she was 20... She she died of, of this year, fe- February 3rd, 2019, at 92. So, oh, live uh, a long wow. life. Wow. I, um, I have a few little facts that if fans want to see, they can see our show notes if you're a patron. Um, so, I'm just going to... I won't prattle on anymore, but I do have a funny story I want to leave you with. Um... When I was in high school, I used to work at a comic book store, uh, not surprisingly, and they there was a line of action figures of the Universal Monsters, so they did a creature from the Black Lagoon, and it came with Julie Adams in like the classic pose from the poster where she's like on the floor and sh- her legs are like folded up under her and she's screaming and she's in the white swimsuit, mm. uh, which was a custom suit for the movie. So, you know, this, this Julie Adams figure didn't really move the way the creature action figure did. It was just like a stationary statue, but she's like on her knees on the ground screaming, right? Mm-hmm. This is the, uh, to paint you a picture. So this guy comes in to buy the toy. He picks it up, buys it. He opens the package in front of me takes Julie Adams out, puts her in his pocket, hands me the rest, including the creature. And he says, I don't, I don't want any of this. I just wanted the girl. And uh, left with the geez. action figure of Julie Adams. What? <laughs> I still have the creature action figure. That I'm is looking so at funny. Really? <laughs> it's so gross. How cool. I don't know what he wanted with that figure, but it's so uh, gross. Oh, yeah. That's uh, pretty gross. Was his name Robert O'Neill? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have never no. I've never. I've never great, I, I don't go. Grandpa. I don't go in. I don't. I don't go into stores and sell books. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. Yeah, actually, uh, Julie Adams is is like the the front runner, saying how only people remember her from Creature, and but she did so many other great things that she was more proud of. But whenever she talked to fans, it was always about Creature from the Black Lagoon. That's what every scream queen says. Yeah, so. But you know, she was like she was like the face of it, along with the cre- along with the Gill Man. So this movie, I can just imagine if I was, you know, fourteen in the fifties when this came out, I'd be so psyched. I mean, just the com even today, but even more so when I was in high school, the combination. That's why I said Congo and Anaconda. Combination of creature, uh, jungle. Military presence would have made it better for me, but adventurers or scientists. I mean, I'm I'm all I'm yeah. on board. You got me. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, it's so good. It's I like, mean, I, like I said, I wasn't bored. I really enjoyed yeah. it. Um, I really yeah, liked. I really liked the music for it too. the The score was great. I mean, it's the classic '50s. You know, I actually had to turn it down a couple times to turn it back up because oh. my my daughter was sleeping, and every, every time you saw the creature, they'd be like, "That's what it was." The, when the creature yeah. popped out, it got substantially louder. Yeah, so I'm like, oh shit, I turned down. But but I, but, I, but I love that about it too. It was it yeah. was really. There's actually three composers who did it, and they like they did what's called composite scoring, which is popular in the day, but unpopular with composers. They hated it, and it would basically be like, oh, you wrote this like gentle melody, you know, over like a horse running through a field. Great, we're gonna borrow that for this love scene, and wow. they they so they had three composers, including Henry Mancini, and they basically said like. Also, you're going to put this creature trumpet theme 
into the, your score as often as possible. Yeah. Huh. So they all hated working on this. <laughs> so you had to have the TV turned up to hear the dialogue. And then as soon as a, yeah. a as soon as one scale of that thing came on the television, your speakers were blown. Right. Yeah, that's what happened to me. I'm like, holy shit. Gosh. Uh, yes. Well, Rob, we, Rob watches everything with subtitles anyway, so why'd you have to have that turned yeah. up? I don't think this had subtitles. I've seen, I, did turn, I did turn subtitles on for the movie that I watched, the What Did You Watch movie. You you do, you, whenever you send a picture of what you're watching or whatever oh, yeah, and post like, it, like, you like, always like have subtitles on. Well, it's because it's, it's just better. <laughs> I, I, you, you know what? Subtitles started with Prom Night because that version was such garbage. I don't think any of us could hear what was being said. I put yeah. the subtitles on. I haven't turned them back off. Yeah. Huh? It right. seems like... I know Prom, Prom Night's an older movie, but it seems like the older movies have good sound. And the and like some of the newer ones, I just can't hear anything. Like, God... Why are you whispering? We are Amazon, <laughs> Amazon, Amazon Prime got like a copy of a copy of a copy of a bootleg VHS, ripped it, and then put it on Amazon. That's how terrible Prom Night was on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The audio wasn't that great in that. Well, I think that wraps us up on Creature from the Black Lagoon, number one, anyways. It was really it was re- good. It was really good. Although the second one's not called number two, so I shouldn't say number one. Revenge so, yeah. of the Creature. Is that right? Revenge yes. of the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yes. Yes. That's, a, that's a mouthful. So we'll be covering that next week. You guys got to get your memes in pertaining to this film for next week, and you can be the horror freak of the week. Uh, get your voicemails in and uh, so you can participate. And also, once after two more weeks here, we'll be voting again on what we'll be covering. So you want to get in as a patron and help us vote for that stuff, too, so you can have a say in the show. Yes. Also, we're talking about doing our first uh, live episode later in November. It'll be an episode that we do um, where patrons at a certain level can participate in the episode and you can talk to us and we'll record it live. um, And we'll we will. I think the plan is to rebroadcast it. But if you want to participate in it, you'll need to be a patron. Uh, And I think we settled on we're going to do Halloween versus Halloween versus Halloween. So, yes, we're. uh, each of us will take one Halloween and then one of us will moderate while we debate which is the best version of Halloween. Which uh, which is Halloween 1978, uh, Halloween Rob Zombie's Halloween, and Halloween 2018. Yep. yep. Yes. I choose Rob Zombie's Halloween. I think I'll be the best, uh, we best all knew person that. to uh, like, go to bat for that. To uh, represent that one. Hmm. I don't That's know right. about that. <laughs> so if you, just, just so to reiterate, because this is a passionate subject for a lot of you guys. Uh, I'm almost thinking we should just do Rob's pro Rob Zombie and not and you know con Rob Zombie whatever the fuck you want to say or against Rob I Zombie. I will be I, I will be I will be pro Zombie. I'm sure you will be. I so, will make I'll make arguments for just, Rob Zombie. Just so genius. you know, just so you know, the gravity of what we're offering here is we will have that argument, and then you can participate in that argument and uh, you know. Type obscenities and whatever True. whatever you want to say, you can get in on the argument with us and be a part of that if you're a patron and you join us live. I'm going to put together a PowerPoint presentation circa <laughs> like 2002. Yeah, um, let, me, let me just see, <laughs> sweeten the pot here. I'm going to beat the pants off of Rob and I'm going to defend Rob Zombie's Halloween. No, I already I'm called going to I prove know, definitively. I... That it no, is the I already called, version of Halloween. I already called Rob Zombie's Halloween. It's not how the game plays. <laughs> it's just it's gonna be hard to beat the original. Carmel's gonna, Carmel gonna have like his opening statement. He's gonna be all law- <laughs> lawyer now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the audience. <laughs> what is horror? <laughs> what is Webster's horror? dictionary defines horror. Yeah. <laughs> well, Rob Zombie has a very nice insight. I on can this. whenever I think of courtrooms now, I just automatically think of uh Emily Rose. Oh yeah, we just watched that. Yeah. We watched, uh, we, yeah, we all watched that together. We did. Remember the good old days? <laughs> Those Car- were the good old days. Carmelo wasn't there. It was just us. Yeah, That's we were supposed right. to watch Deborah Logan, but now it's finally available. Yeah, Anyways. which Deborah Logan is still awesome. Well, let's yeah. let's just have that move us into our next segment here. What did you watch? Ooh. Oh, that was nice. Uh, C- Carmelo, oh, what, what movie did you go? You see better have watched Deborah Logan. <laughs> 
<laughs> was, was I supposed to watch Deborah Logan? Yes, What's that other and one the I was Abyss. You were supposed to watch the Deborah Abyss Logan and Deborah the Logan. Abyss. No, that wasn't it. There was another movie you wanted me to see. It was You were really upset about it, too. It was too. The what Abyss. Was the Abyss. No, that wasn't it. No. That was the I, one. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, dear God. Oh, goodness. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I want. I started watching Supernatural again. I'm behind a couple seasons. Get the yeah. fuck out of town. That shit's on CBS <laughs> at like 8 a.m. <laughs> no, that thing's on the WB. That's what it is, WB. The Not even There's a lot of CW. Supernatural fans No, you know there. what? I watched um, Black Christmas it. for the first time. I'd never seen Black oh, Christmas. Oh, yeah. Ooh, great one. Olivia that. Hussey is... Uh, mm-hmm. We covered that. Oh, yeah. A couple, mm-hmm. couple years ago. That was really good. Yeah, at least, oh, so at least then. When they tried to reuse her uh, when she got older, I didn't like her as much, but ugh, Black yeah. Christmas. Yes. It's just a Friday the 13th ripoff. It's, she, it's also the only uh, Margot Kidder movie where I was like, wow, Margot Kidder. Damn, she can get it. Yeah, I didn't think she was too bad in it was in Amityville yeah she was yeah. Amityville yeah she's all right in there she's all right in the first Superman but she becomes ghoulish after that uh, Olivia Hussey does play the mom in Psycho 2 or Psycho 3 I, I forgot which one but uh, she was yeah, a little, she wasn't looking as good at yeah. that time so. anyways I also watched Shining and Rosemary's Baby so that was my week mm. oh god mm. the Shining the, the oh yeah I, I had seen, for the record i'd seen both of those but my wife had not so we watched those what things. i'm surprised you went back and sat through rosemary's baby it's a good movie but it's you know it's like two and a half hours long isn't it it, it is but i haven't seen it in 15 years so i thought uh, it's it was, a goodie you know. it's you also did, there's a lot of good stuff in there if you've seen it twice because the seeds they lay for the the, the twist and for the paranoia are really interesting hmm. and if you know what what's coming it's just fucking full yeah. of stuff it's it is cool. it i is. cannot believe you didn't watch at least taking it ever logan like when i am recommended a stellar <laughs> found footage movie i have to watch it within like the next eight hours damn yeah um well then That's you should goes. try she walks the woods, walks the woods. Yeah, yes. yeah yeah yes yeah, definitely available on amazon prime scotty what'd you watch this week let's stop beating me up please um well you know <laughs> i i meant to watch uh room 237 the documentary because lance wagner uh, recommended to I, me. I've watched it, and I think it's, it's just full so of fucking nutcases. Yeah, boring. But I still want to see it. I'm just, just telling you, yeah, it's so boring. I, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but it's like it's it's like every theory pulled from everything. Like this thing, this piece of wallpaper in the background still may wanna... prove that aliens visited us in 1982. Well, still, I I I am very I, I I'm a shining nut. And I, I want to see it just well, for that's that reason. Why you'll, be just, you'll be disappointed. That's, None of this has to do with The Shining. That's All why of I, this has yeah. to do with Stanley Kubrick and whether or not he faked the moon landing. Well, that's why I, I didn't like I, it. I like Kubrick, I love, the Shining, I love The Shining so much that I didn't like Room 237. Well, I'll still have to check it out, just yeah. just for, for the heck of it. Which, uh, Dr. Sleep is coming out soon, and that looks looks pretty damn good. Yeah. It does um, look good. I uh, I didn't see anything horror this week. If you, I don't, you don't really count Hocus Pocus, I watched that with my wife. Um, I did watch the uh, the new. I do love Hocus Pocus. Yeah, it is great. I, I watched um, the the Lion King actually, um, and that's not really horror, but uh, the one that uh, John Favreau, the one that just came out, that looks like real animals. Yeah, it was it was really good. But uh, yeah, so anyways, um, other than that, didn't watch. Didn't watch any horror um, besides Hoax Pocus. I watched She Walks the Woods on Amazon Prime. I did watch that. Okay, yes. Uh, you watched Frozen. Well, Frozen was on. Stella watched Frozen at least once a day and has been mixing Entangled and now Moana yesterday. So she's been changing it up a little bit. Okay. Um, I watched uh, Stillborn last night. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's on Shudder right now. And it just caught my eye because I was looking up. I was actually looking up digital effects people for our, our upcoming film. And I was, you know, halfway impressed with the digital effects on Grave Encounters. So I said, I was like, oh, who did their digital effects? And it was the directors, the Vicious Brothers, who don't go by that anymore. Um, so then I was like, oh, what else have they done? And one of them had done this movie stillborn i think eli roth produced it or something and so i was like i'm gonna watch it and it's pretty good it's nothing new and they don't explain a lot that they should but the visuals are cool and it's, it's worth a watch but but yeah i shutter. love i love grave encounters that's one yeah. of my that's one of my top 10 i love it too so i watched that and i'm i can't help but feel i watched don't watch something else i I, th- I think that's it, but, you know, if I think of something, I'll chime in while Carmel's, or Rob's finishing up his. So, Rob, what'd you watch? Oh, just come back to me. Yeah, we're, we're to you now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I have it written down. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. 
Okay. And uh, before I before I do forget, uh, Ty and Draco's gun of the movie was a Winchester model 1892 40 caliber. Oh yeah, okay. that's right. Nice. We did see that. What yeah. about the harpoon gun? Uh, it harpoon is real. Gun. They do. They they did make like like uh, charged or pressurized hydraulic harpoon guns. I didn't get a model on wow. that. Um, I watched. What did I watch? Oh, I watched uh, She Walks the Woods. Um, yes. Great starring film. starring Danny Bonin, uh, Scotty Bonin, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Jason Potter, uh, Jesse. I don't, don't remember. Yeah, that one. Uh, Vivian. Ed and, Yep, that one. Uh, Taylor Morgan. And, you don't uh, have to name all the characters. And uh, my heartthrob, uh, Jeremy Cumrine. Uh and uh, it was amazing. Uh, but I did watch today Haunt. Oh, yeah. It's on oh, Shudder. Yeah. Um, it's it's fantastic. I mean, it's really, really, really good. Um, I know everybody was recommending Satanic Panic, uh, but uh, Shudder is free, or it was on Shudder. So I watched Haunt instead. I uh, highly recommend. Great ending. 10 out of 10. I think it's fantastic. Sweet. All right, guys. That wraps us up Heck here. Yeah. Uh, make sure. Yep. Yeah, just make sure you follow us at Danny Bonin, at Scotty Bonin, at O'Neilio with four O's, at Chimera's Comics, at Cult Classic Horror on everything except at CC Horror on Twitter. Please, 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 please go check out She Walks the Woods on Amazon Prime. Uh, it'll be coming to more stream streaming platforms after a while here. There, I think the distributor is doing one at a time. So. Eventually, Tubi TV, YouTube, uh, movies, um, Google Play, all the good stuff. So just pay attention to that. I think it. So- uh, no, no, I was going to ask him because people were asking, um, can they order a Blu-ray? Is that I, available the through Amazon? Still open, right, Carmelo, or is it not? No, I think we've we've had okay. to shut down the pre-order no, store, th- but it will be available to yeah. the general public soon. Everything okay. you cannot order a Blu-ray yet. Um, we just got the Blu-ray files to the distributor. Those of you guys waiting on Blu-rays from the Kickstarter. Um, but then the, I'm hoping the distributor does something before they leave, but they just told me they're leaving for a film fest for like two or three weeks that they're heavily involved in. And so we may not get that going for another three weeks. And so, like I said, Blu-rays might not – physical copy Blu-rays might not be available till like the first of the year, mm-hmm. just so you know. Well, that's okay. I just think people were just curious, and they can always should, get them later. You guys should pick it up because um, I just watched this thing. I previewed it. We have like a thirty-minute long making of documentary that is just fucking killer. It is awesome. It's awesome. Yes. Some really good commentary on there too. If you're into watching movies, and yeah. Commentary. So all of us yeah. do a commentary on the film, and then there's two commentaries. One with just with all of us, all four of us. And then a commentary with Scotty and I and Jason Potter, who's in it, and he's also the editor and DP, and then the two directors as well. So check that out. And they they can um, <clears throat> go and rate and rate and review on Amazon Prime. Yes, but do you have to be a Prime member to to rate no, and if review you, it? No, you can rent it on mm-hmm. Amazon. If you don't have Prime, you can still go to Amazon and just rent it. I think it's like three dollars mm-hmm. to watch it. And then you can, and you don't even have to do any of that. You can just go there and rate it if you want. It'll, mm. If you watch it and then rate and review it, it will say that you're a verified purchaser, which is better, obviously. Mm. But if you're like, I don't give a fuck about your movie, but you guys are cool, at least go there and just leave a leave a good rating. <laughs> yes, there you go. All right, awesome. All right, guys, uh, thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next week. Revenge later. See you guys. Happy Halloween. Don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. Oh, yes. There will be blood.